Hello, I am Ali, and this presentation will be about the game of Hex and a neat property of the game. The game of Hex is played between two players on a hexagonal lattice with equal side lengths, a shape as shown here. Each player is assigned two opposing sides of the board, and they each take turns placing tiles or labeling the hexagons to create a path connecting their two opposing sides. An example game goes as follows. Assume Alice is assigned the top and the bottom of the board, and Bob the right and the left sides of the board. They take turns placing tiles. Assume Alice goes first. Note that there are no rules around where you can place your tiles. The tiles that you place do not have to be beside each other. In this game, Alice wins because they have created a path from the top side of the board to the bottom side of the board, consisting of only their tile. The game of X was first invented by Pete Hein in 1942, and it was later rediscovered by John Nash at Princeton. It is a game of perfect information, meaning at any given point in time, both players know everything there is to know about the game. It is a determined game, meaning there are no draws, and actually Hein knew it at the time they invented the game. Hex being a determined game will be the topic of this video. We will prove that there is always a winner using Spurner's Lemma and a clever manipulation of the board. Spurner's Lemma roughly goes as follows. We start with a triangle T labeled with vertices A, B, C. As an example, this will be our triangle T with vertices A, B, and C. We subdivide T into at least two triangles. So in the simplest case, we have a subdivision like this. We will go for a more complicated example. So this would be a triangulation of T. We have divided T into multiple triangles. Next, we color the vertices. The vertices of T, A, B, and C, they will be colored 1, 2, and 3. So A will be 1, B will be colored 2, and C will be colored 3. On any vertex that is on the edge of T, for example this one, it will be colored one of the colors of either B or C. So, for example, this could be color 2. This cannot be colored 1 by definition of how we are doing the coloring. This vertex here must be colored 1 or 3. Let's assume it is color 3. These are the main vertices of T. And we have two internal vertices. These can be colored any color. Let's assume this one is colored 1 and this one is colored 2. This is called a Sperner coloring of the triangle T. Sperner's lemma states that there is a triangle with three vertices colored 1, 2, and 3. In this example here, that triangle is this one. This is a triangle with vertices colored 1, 2, and 3. And now we will prove that the game of hex always has a winner. We will consider a hex board and we'll just assume it's a 4x4 board for now, just so that the concepts are easier to see. We'll assume that the game had ended in a draw between Alice and Bob and as per our earlier example, Alice plays from top to bottom and Bob plays from left to right. For each hexagon, we will associate a vertex to it. We will connect two vertices if their corresponding hexagons are beside each other. 
Next, we will add four vertices, V1, V2, V3, and V4, that represent the four edges of the board. These vertices will be colored to each hexagon that is on that side of the board. We will adjust the graph a bit, and then we will move V2 down, V3 down, and we will move V4 up a little bit. The purpose is so that our graph looks like a triangle with edges colored in green as shown here. We now have a triangulation for T. We have divided T into multiple triangles. We would like to be able to use Sperner's lemma, hence we have a triangulation for T. Later we will add Sperner coloring to this triangulation and be able to use Sperner's lemma. Before we go there, we will assume that the game had ended in a draw and will label the hexagon's vertices with Alice and Bob's labels, A for Alice and B for Bob. We will label V1 and V4 with A because those are the sides that correspond to Alice and V2 and V3 with B because those are the sides corresponding with Bob. A win for Alice corresponds to a path from V1 to V4 with all vertices labeled A. Similarly for Bob, a, a win is a path from V2 to V3 with all vertices labeled B. Next, we will add Sperner coloring to this triangulation. We will color the vertices using a, using a coloring function as follows. F will color a given vertex V1 if there's a path from V1 to V where all vertices are labeled A. And similarly, F of V equals 2 if there's a path from V2 to V with all vertices labeled B. Otherwise, f of v equals 3. As an example here, this vertex would be colored 1 because there is a path from v1 to this vertex with all vertices labeled A. Sperner's lemma states that we have a multicolored triangle. We'll let ABC be this triangle and assume f of a equals 1, f of b equals 2, f of c equals 3. Since f of a equals 1, vertex A is labeled with capital A, Alice is labeled, and that there is a path from V1 to A with, with vertices labeled A. This is by the fact that f of a equals 1. Similarly, vertex B is labeled B, and there's a path from V2 to B, with vertices labeled B. This is shown in cyan, and the path uh, in green is the path for, uh, for Alice. Vertex C is labeled either A or B. We will consider both cases. If vertex C is labeled A, then we can extend the green path to go from V1 to vertex A and then to vertex C. So vertex C is labeled A, this means that f of C equals 1. And if vertex C is labeled B, we can extend the cyan path. So now we have a path from V2 to B, and then we're going from B to C. Thus f of C must equal to 2 because there is a path from V2 to C with all vertices labeled B. In either case, we reach a contradiction. It cannot be that f of c equals 3. But Sperner's lemma had told us that the triangle is multicolored, meaning one of the vertices would be labeled 3. We have just shown that is not possible. So we have a contradiction, and we can conclude that the game of hex will surely end in a draw.